If you want to learn more about the span electrical panel paired with the span drive EV charger, then watch this video. Hey, Gary Cruz with GaryCruz.com here. And if you're new to my channel, I cover uh, electronics and gadgets in general. And in my next couple of videos, I'll be talking about my transition to Tesla Solar and Powerwall and my whole self-reliance using the span panel ecosystem along with Tesla. So today I'll be talking about the span electrical panel along with the span EV drive. The main reason why I got the span smart panel is because I was planning to go with Tesla Solar and to take advantage of the dynamic load capabilities of the span panel. First of all, what is a span panel? The span panel is, it is a smart panel, but basically it uses the same circuit breakers as a regular panel. So that was what I was confused about at first, is like, why would I want to get a smart panel? It's not just a pretty panel though. There's a couple of advantages and reasons why I got the span panel. Number one, I wanted to pair it with the span drive. And number two is that I got the Tesla Powerwall right here and also Tesla Solar. So why does that all matter? Well, first of all, my, my system is in a cul-de-sac and I only have a 100 amp power from the grid. So with that said, if I'm installing the span drive, which can go up to 40 amps, then technically I have about 60 amps left over. The beauty of this is that there is dynamic charging available for the span drive. So if we take a look at the manage charge and go into here, I can set up to charge dynamically where it charges the vehicle at max possible speed and throttles down if let's say for example I needed to run the dryer or any other high amperage circuit in my home. The other thing too is you can see how much battery I, ha I have. Uh, currently I have 60%. It's being charged by the sun right now. So you can see that Tesla is sending solar power to my power wall and also sending power to my home where I'm not taking any power from the grid. I can also join the virtual power plant. Consider subscribing to my channel because I'm going to go into an in-depth review about my whole process of going with solar and the Tesla power wall. In the meantime, let's just focus on the span drive and the span panel. Now I'm going to go into a deeper dive of some of the features of the app on the top left or on the top you see how, what's coming in in terms of my sources of power. So I've got 2740 watts coming in from my solar panels. In the middle is the grid. If I was taking energy from the grid, it will be pushing down, but you see that I'm sending some of it back. And then on the top right is the status of the battery. Currently we're charging the battery through solar, um, hence the yellow lines. And then we're taking some power from the grid and solar and pushing into my home where my home is pulling in a thousand watts. As we scroll down and take a look at the power usage, there's another benefit of the span panel is that I get visibility in which circuits are using what. So if I click on view all circuits, I can view by activity in terms of the ratings of most power usage to the least amount of power. So I can scroll all the way down here. I can do it by activity. I can drill into by area. I don't have any areas set, but this is where you can define it based off my home electrical wiring, or I can take it a look at the way it is arranged in my panel. So if we take a look here, um, I've got my different breakers. So this is what the breaker looks like virtually in the, the span app. And then as I scroll down here, you can see the span EV drive is taking up 20 and 22 and my garage is on 24 and my kitchen takes up two other breakers on 26 and 28. Okay, let's take a look at the circuits uh, that we were just in. Those are some of the stats. So another benefit of the app is that I can see stats from a daily basis, a weekly basis, monthly basis, and by the year. I got this Tesla system, a solar panel and power wall installed literally three days ago. And I already have today 20% of my energy from the sun, 7% from my battery this morning, and 73% from the grid because in this morning, uh, a lot of it was being charged to the solar, um, to the Tesla Powerwall because it was at 30% this morning. Uh, you can see how self-sufficient you are. 
where I'm using my energy based off the categories in the app, and then what's been using the most energy and my energy use over time. And I can look at that historically. And so if you're a data nerd, this app is really great to drive, dive into the, your usage of electricity over the different time periods here. So the other thing that I would like to add is that if you take a look at the circuits here, let's look at, for example, my office. So in my office, I have these different devices and appliances. And the only feedback that I would have for span is if I can just add these dynamically. So right now you have to click on add and then you go search for the particular device you want to add to that circuit. But just like the sense, I think you can just turn things off and on like a refrigerator and then I'll say, hey, we noticed that there was a spike in usage. What do you want to categorize this app, this appliance? And then you can name it accordingly. Uh, with that said, then I would like to see some sort of notification saying, hey, you know what? your refrigerator is using a lot more power or using a lot less power, therefore not refrigerating, maybe you want to double check to see if there's a fault with the refrigerator. In fact, the reason why I brought that up is because my refrigerator died and when I looked at the power usage, I can tell exactly when it died because the power usage dropped dramatically from what it was using before. The other thing too is like, think of a, about emergency scenario. If you left uh, your, an iron on, <laughs> right? And iron's using a lot of power and you can say, hey, you know, you don't typically use this much power in the bathroom circuit. You might wanna check if there is a device that has been left on, or there could be some sort of indicator that there is some sort of abnormal usage. So other than that, I really like the visibility of the app. It's all clean within the actual panel itself. And I didn't have to hook up any additional wiring to get any of these readings from my different circuits. So that's another real great advantage of the span panel. The way this works is that this span has an ethernet cable that's plugged into my Tesla uh, gateway. I think this is called the gateway too, I'll just double check. And the gateway is what determines where you're gonna get the power in your home. So for example, if it's coming from the sun, the grid, or the battery. Now back to the span panel. What are some of the other advantages of why I got the span panel? Number two is the dynamic loads when I'm running off the power wall. So for example, if I go to my managed backup here, how much backup the 60% of my current battery charge gets me? Right now, it covers four hours. So if I go to the managed backup, this is where I can determine my must-have circuits. For example, I definitely want the refrigerator, etc. Right now I have all the circuits. So in other words, the span panel acts as your critical loads where you don't have to hardwire which loads you want the power wall to support during an outage. I can simply say, all right, you know what? Uh, the family room is not that important to me, so let me move that over to my nice to have circuits. And then I can also put things in the non-essential circuits like the dryer or washer, so I'm not going to be doing any laundry while there's a power outage. So that's another reason why I got the span panel is to dynamically load the battery power from my power wall. The next thing also is I've got full visibility in my power usage. So if you take a look at the Tesla app, uh, you can see that I'm getting 2.8 kilowatts from solar. Uh, my house is drawing one kilowatts and uh, 1.8 kilowatts is going to my power wall. But when you look at the one kilowatts going to my home, how many um, kilowatts are actually being used and where? And so there's other uh, tools that I was looking into like the, the Sense and the other one um, I'll put in the description. And the reason why I wanted to go with that is because I wanted to see my power usage, but I didn't want to hook anything up into my existing panel. So what's great is that if we go back to the span app and take a look what is using the most power right now, out of the one kilowatts that's coming to my home, I see that my home office and the uh, boys' bedroom is taking up a lot of power. And if you're wondering where all this power is going, it's because I've got uh, a bunch of ubiquity switches uh, throughout my home. One's in the home office, of course, and also have three different network attached storage from QNAP. Our garage here, the lights right now are these really high powered LED lights and it's taken about uh, 200 or so watts. If you take a look at how the grid got its energy this week from PG&E, this is coming in from my electrical company here in 
the San Francisco Bay Area, a large percentage is gas, but the nice thing is that the next highest one is solar, then wind. So California is doing a fairly pretty good job at getting renewable energy used. All right, so uh, right now it is 11.53. Uh, you can see that it's almost high noon and we're in December. So I've got 15 panels on top, currently drawing in uh, 2,870 watts from the sun. It looks like I'm completely self-sufficient right now, which is really a really good feeling to see that. So as I start to explore the system more, I'm going to go into a more detailed video about the whole system with Tesla. Now, the next thing I've got connected is the span drive. Now, right now I don't have any electric vehicles, but I plan to replace my cars with, with Teslas. And one of my main concerns was, hey, Teslas have a proprietary connector, or actually what, what, what they call it now is the North American something standard, NAX. And this uses a J1772, which is the actual standard. Uh, there's a little connector here and you can put the J1772 adapter to Tesla to plug this in to a Tesla. So I had, you'll see in this video that I had my friends, uh, my neighbor try his Model X. So okay. what do we have to do so to- hidden, hidden trick with stopping the charge and disconnecting when you have the adapter installed is you will have to um, press the button to stop the charge. This button? Mm -hmm. But you'll also have to pull out both the charging port, the, the charger, plus the adapter at the same time. So you actually need two hands for this. So it's now unlocked. See how the color changed? You've got to grip the adapter and this simultaneously to pull them both out. Ah. Because if you only pull out this part, yeah, the charge, the adapter will stay. That's what happened to my neighbor's out. car. Okay. That's how you do it. And then he had to do something to unlock it. He had to unlock it. Yeah, that seems easier. This is one step versus yeah. going back to the thing, unlocking yeah. it, and then yeah. taking it's it a, out. It's a, it's a two-handed pull. Yeah, got it. Not. And then the charger door closed on it. And you said the adapter comes with the car? Correct. Makes sense. Level one would be the one that you would plug into a regular uh, power port, let's say the one that you have in your wall right now. This one is hardwired to my span, and it can draw up to 40 amps. Uh, which basically gets you 35 miles per hour at level two on a Tesla. So each hour that it's charging, it should theoretically fill you up an additional 35 miles of range. Now, I don't have any EVs at the moment. I plan to replace all three of my gas cars with Teslas. And that is one of the main reasons why I got a span drive. So keep in mind that if you have an electric car now, like my neighbor, like one of my good friends, he doesn't have a charger at home. He actually supercharges. But with the mobile connector, you can get level one charging, which gets you a decent charge overnight to charge your car, especially if you have a relatively low commute. But for me, with three cars that are eventually going to be charged, I wanted to have a fast charger, and that's why I got this. The other thing is that it looks really cool with the span unit. Look at this. It's all rectangular. It's got the glass front along with the glass front with the span. It matches the Tesla gateway, the inverter, and the power wall. So this is a really nice matchy-matchy system. I like pretty things, but there is functionality with this. Uh, so I had the span panels installed at the end of April or May-ish. And that was the first step prior to ordering Tesla because they, Tesla wanted to get a picture of my panel. So I wanted to send them a, because I was so excited to get Tesla, I wanted to make sure that I removed any roadblocks from me getting Tesla solar. So my house was built in 1989. The main panel, electrical panels on the outside is old. Uh, I had a transfer switch connected, which wasn't done by code. So I really wanted to start from scratch knowing that I want to have some of the visibility and the flexibility and the control with the span panel. So that's why I started off with that. The order process was pretty simple. I worked with a sales rep named David. Hi, hi David. <laughs> Thank you for all your help throughout this whole process. He's a great sales rep. In fact, um, definitely reach out to him if you're looking to get either the span drive or the span panel. I'll put his information below. But I wanted to make sure I get this video out sooner than my overall Tesla system because that's going to be much more involved because of the whole process involved. There's a lot of questions that I had in terms of 
am I allowed to get uh, Tesla solar in an HOA? Short answer apparently is now yes, but there was a whole process with that. Um, why get Tesla solar? I wanted to be off the grid. I wanted to have some reliance, uh, especially in California with the wildfires. There's going to be some rolling blackouts. There's potential blackouts that have affected me in the past that were quite annoying because as a technology person, I want to make sure that I am available online and also have power for our home. So with that said, I highly recommend the span panel if you're pairing it up with some sort of solar panel and battery to give you that flexibility. Number two, if you want the visibility of your circuits to, um, when, right when I turned it on, I saw that I was using over 2000 watts of energy. I'm like, I became much more aware of my electricity usage. So my, electri my electricity usage has gone down. And then the other piece is pairing it with their smart charger because there's going to be some additional features coming from the EV drive. So for example, uh, it's going to, you, you'll be able to charge directly from your solar panels or you can also have the dynamic allocation of your amperage based off your load. And number two, the other thing is that since I couldn't upgrade the amperage from PG&E from 100 amp to a 200 amp plus that's going to be really costly, I wanted to have that dynamic capability. I'm not using a bunch of the circuits uh, because uh, we have up to 32 and I'm using barely half of those. But even if I was using, even if using half is still very beneficial for me from that perspective. And then uh, the reason why I got Tesla versus like Enphase and other like Solar City. Number one, just for transparency sake, I'm a Tesla investor, so I wanted to see what the whole process was like. I like Tesla as a company overall, but you'll see more of that details in my Tesla panel and power wall video coming up. In the meantime, I highly recommend the span panel and the EV drive. Check out the description below for more information and reach out to Dave if you want to order this system. Thanks for watching. So if you're wondering if the span drive can reach to my other car. I'll simply unroll this. This should reach all the way to the other car. Now it's going to be a little bit over the car. I don't have the car in here, obviously. But the other thing is that I noticed is that this gauge of cable is really thick. Um, so I do wish it was a little bit thinner, but you know, I guess that's a sign of quality that it is thicker. And so when I'm done, go back over here. Beats <laughs> waiting in the Costco line. All right, let me know if I should attach this Mr. Fusion home energy reactor sticker right on my inverter for my solar panels. Let me know if you know what movie this references. It's related to the lights. Charges his car using the, oh man. I gotta plug that back in. Power went out. Let's go back here. Go already. Thank you. Wait for the airplane to fly by. Let's wrap up this video.